Inglorious Bastards is another release that many people have asked me to do a review of. It's a Quentin Tarantino film, it's his 2009 release, and it stars Brad Pitt and plenty of others. They're all fabulous in the roles. But I get the impression people are not happy with this disc, and I suspect it's because they've heard it's a 2K upscale. So let's take a look. Inglorious Bastards is a 2 hour and 33 minute long film and all the extras are included on the 4K disc as well as the Blu-ray but they're all on the 4K. It has three inner rings on the inner circumference so if we take a look at that might be able to make that out I'll try and get a proper close up but there are three inner rings on that inner circumference, which does denote, I believe, a 100 gigabyte disc. But I can't believe Quentin Tarantino, who has shot this on full frame anamorphic 35 millimeter, I cannot believe he would finish the product on anything but film. He had Sally, his editor again, working on this. And there's an interesting extra on here where he shows some of the, I suppose there are outtakes of everyone saying hello to Sally as she's gonna be all alone in the editing room. It's not listed in the bonus features on the back here, but believe me, it is on the disc. It went out apparently as a 2K to cinemas, and I found no details anywhere to advise us that the negative has been retransferred and it's gone out as a 4K since or remastered in 4K for this disc. So what you've probably got here is an upscale. Does it matter? Well, I didn't know any of this before starting the process of going through the disc and it first came on and I thought this looks good what a really fine grain 35 millimeter print that's not unusual these days film stocks are well they're just so good and very often you cannot denote or you cannot detect any film grain in what you're looking at doesn't mean to say it's not there it is now to find out it's a 2k upscale and yet having looked at that definition the clarity the color that HDR gives us is giving us a filmic looking image and the density, the contrast again, looks very much like you would get from a film print. But at 10 feet wide, is there going to be a perceptible difference between a film that has been downsampled to a 2K video and one that's been downsampled to a 4K and then shown on our tiny home screens? Even at 10 feet wide, I think I would struggle unless I had two 10 foot wide screens side by side. I think once you start getting sort of 20, 24 feet wide, then maybe it will be easier to discern a difference. But I cannot see any reason why anyone would want to not purchase this disc based on perhaps reading that it's a 2K upscale. If that sort of thing does disturb you, then steer clear of this disc. But perhaps bear in mind that immediately the 4K finished, I put the Blu-ray on and it looks terrible by comparison to the 4K. So I don't know how the Blu-ray was done, but a 2009, perhaps 2010 Blu-ray, quite an early one. There were some that weren't that good, weren't there, back then. I don't think that's necessarily the case today. Most of the Blu-rays I see, they tend to rival the 4K if they've been done from the same master. It's just the density and the color isn't as good. But in this, it just doesn't look real. In fact, it's another one of those where with the 4K, you've got the difference between a film print and a video on the Blu-ray. That's maybe a little harsh, but that was the impression I had after watching the 4K, then putting the Blu-ray on and scooting through a few of the chapters on there. It just looks awful by comparison. So I think that possibly tells you all you need to know. But of course, our systems are not only all different, they're all set up differently. And I try to replicate the look of a film in here as closely as possible. And of course, that is easier to do with a 4K disc than it is with a Blu-ray because you've got the wider color gamut and the superior contrast. Now the film itself has an aspect ratio of 2.40 to 1 and the sound is DTS HD 5.1. I thought the sound was very good, great surround sound qualities and not too bassy. Very often these sort of action driven films, although this is a sort of drama action, very often they have an overuse of bass and although I love THX bass in here, I 
don't think it would have suited this one too well so it was nice to have a sort of more subdued bass that's not to say it's not there it is it's just handled very well and I should say about the original 35mm shoot as with all film shoots even if they're shot entirely on digital video or film there are always some scenes that don't look quite as good as others and this is the case with this but they're very few but they do stand out when they're there at least they stood out to me but I was sitting here looking at this for a review they may pass you by and that's how that should happen because we've all got to accept that nothing has ever been made that is entirely perfect I mm, suppose it was Jaws, wasn't it? Anyway, I digress. Nothing has really been made that's ever entirely perfect as much as we love them. So I think it's a very good disc. The story itself is... I don't know if there was a troop called the Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> it might have been. I mean, there were some crazy things going on, but... It's a work of fiction and history gets changed. I won't tell you how, but that surprised me. I rather enjoyed it. And I think with what's going on in the world today and something from back then is rearing its ugly head again, I think this might be quite a good wake up call as to how things really can go awry if you turn to the dark side. I enjoyed the film. It's taken me a while to get into Tarantino films, but I enjoyed it. My wife, not so much. Could be she hasn't quite got there yet with Tarantino and the violence. Yes, there is some violence and some of it's quite nasty, but if you got through the baseball bat scenes in Casino, you'll have no problem with this. But there's one sex scene that's pretty nasty. Just a second or two at the most and then it's gone. There's some bad language. It's comedic. Don't take it seriously and I think you could have a good time with it. I don't think it's Quentin Tarantino's best film right now. I prefer Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to all those I've seen, but I really started getting into him when Clark Teddles down in Australia, the young lad down there, he told me he was going to be going into, I think it was the Ritz in Sydney, I think he was going to be going in there to shoot the 35mm presentation of Pulp Fiction. And I asked him to get a shot of the dance sequence through the porthole, and that he did. And I thought, it's time for me to take another look at this film now. And then Rob Murphy produced Splice here, which I think is the best cinema film history documentary I've ever seen. And it's now got a release on Blu-ray in America. So anyone who's in the Americas who now finally wants to take a look at Splice here, you should be able to do so. And of course, the thing that really makes this special is Quentin Tarantino. This largely is based around the release of The Hateful Eight on 70mm film and how that resurrected film in cinemas around the world. So quite a connection. This and what Clark did is what's really got me into Quentin Tarantino. I think I saw him differently and I'm very much enjoying visiting his films. What I've seen so far, the best single sequence is in Inglorious Bastards, the sequences around that beautiful cinema, just wonderful. That really does show off Quentin Tarantino's love of the cinema and how he got to where he's got to today. So you'll have to let me know what you think I should look at next. I rather fancy Jackie Brown because I love that genre of films. Of course, there's also Django. There's a whole load of them. I've seen The Hateful Eight. That wasn't really my thing, even though it's such a major thing of splice here. So perhaps when I look at it again, I'll feel differently. Right, I think that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, bye bye for now.